The problem of plastic is immense. We are now finding not just plastic all on the beach. Microplastics have now infiltrated effectively everything. From the bottom of the Marianas Trench to the top of Everest, the glimmers for hope in plastics are that the world does care. There's actually a decent global consensus that we need to do something about plastics in the environment. The solutions to many climate problems already exist in nature. We take a natural process that occurs in the ocean and replicate it on land to make an alternative to plastic that is biocompatible and degradable. I grew up in Orange County, California in the Dana Point area. I always found a lot of solace just being in nature as a kid. Then I started to get into surfing. And once I caught that bug, I just started spending a lot of time at the beach in the water. I was a big science nerd in high school. I was on the National Oceanographic Science Bowl team. So that's why when I go to the ocean, I still know the genus and species of the seaweed that I'm looking at. In college, I was planning to go to med school. And then I came across a newspaper article about carbon emissions that changed my whole trajectory. So I started to do a bunch of research and learned that there are microorganisms in nature that consume methane and CO2 as their food source. And when they do that, they make this molecule called PHB. I didn't really know anything about PHB back then, but I did know it was a meltable material. And so it had the ability potentially to replace plastic. That was it. I never looked back. Traditional plastic starts as a fossil fuel. They use a chemical process to make then what's called a polymer. That is then dried into a powder and then melted into a pellet. But there's two things about it that are really unfortunate. One is that process emits a whole lot of carbon into the air. The second is they make a molecule that was invented in the lab. By and large, nature's never seen it and has no mechanisms by which to consume it. And that is the reason why that fork continues to float in the ocean for longer than our lifetimes. Plastics are very useful. They're lightweight, they're low cost, and they're really high performance materials. These things are part of society. Solutions need to be there to give someone a different choice. So what we do is we take microorganisms from nature, feed them greenhouse gases and air, and they grow this PHB inside their cells. We extract that material, dry that into fine white powder, and then we melt it into a pellet that we call air carbon. Because we use renewable power and greenhouse gas as our inputs, we have a net carbon negative process. And PHB is made in almost everything alive. If that molecule ever ends up in the environment, it's seen it before. And so soil microorganisms, water microorganisms, they all know how to consume it it will be broken down just the same as a banana peel or a tree leaf. It took about 10 years to figure out the performance. Our first chair you can break with one hand like peanut brittle. Air carbon can be a straw that never gets soggy. It can be a fork that is strong and tough. It can be a coating for a bowl or a plate that otherwise would have been plastic. It can be eyewear. It can be a whole range of things that we think can make a massive impact on the world. I think most people feel like climate change is just too big, but the future is not yet written. And that is a really important thing to remember. We still have an opportunity to fix this. It's gonna be hard, but it's not over. And I take a lot of inspiration in that. I'm Mark Herma. I'm CEO and co-founder of New Light Technologies.